This is Togo, a small West African country on the Gulf of Guinea. It has a population of under 9 million people and a GDP of just $8 billion. So how has Togo also become the home to Africa's newest power in African football broadcasting? Man, do we have a story for you. New World TV is a company that was created in 2015 with broadcast channels live on satellite, IPTV and radio. New World has both a free-to-air and pay TV license and they're active in roughly 16 African markets, which are mostly francophone or French-speaking countries. In March 2021, New World TV made a remarkable entry into the world of sports broadcast rights. They acquired the rights to the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Finals of 2019 have been a riot of colour. A heady mix of joy. Sub -Saharan Africa. In addition, New World TV was also granted free to air rights in Togo. And now they made their biggest splash yet. On November 10th, New World TV announced in a post on X that they've entered into a three-year deal with the Confederation of African Football. The deal is estimated to be worth around 1.5 billion rand or $75.9 million over a period of three years. It includes the rights to 13 competitions in total, which include the 2023 and 2025 Africa Cup of Nations tournaments across 46 countries in the region, including South Africa. So Supersport is out. So how did they do this? Well, there've been rumors about state support, which began when the channel invited several former football stars to Togo in September 2021, with the state's support in logistics and security. Despite New World TV being a broadcaster, they collaborated with FIFA to host a two-day workshop in Lome, uniting leaders of free-to-air television and pay TV stations from 42 African nations. This event marked a historic occasion, being the first time where FIFA and New World partnered with state-owned television stations to ensure a unified approach in delivering the event to audiences across the African continent. To understand why this changes sports broadcasting, you need a bit of context. Prior to New World TV arriving on the scene, the two biggest broadcasters on the continent were Canal Plus and MultiChoice. With 6.6 .6 million subscribers at the end of June 2022, Canal Plus Group is the undisputed pay TV leader in Francophone Sub-Saharan Africa. Canal Plus is present in more than 25 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, but MultiChoice is the real gorilla on the continent with 23.5 million subscribers, 9.3 million of those in South Africa, and 14.2 million on the rest of the continent. The two companies have been collaborating on productions for years, and Canal Plus has gradually been buying up small stakes in multi-choice, from 6.5% in October 2020 to its current level of over 30%. Now this begs the question, how has this Togolese-based broadcaster which was active in 16 francophone markets and was established less than 10 years ago, managed to acquire exclusive rights across Africa. With such a limited reach against established players like MultiChoice and Canal Plus. While we have a theory, this is a game of chicken and the aim is to see who blinks first. While the government or FIFA affiliation rumors can't be proven, one thing we do know is there is a lot of francophone money behind New World TV. Enough to outbid the biggest player in the market and even make sub-licensing difficult for them. We reached out to our network to inquire about this and a source very close to the matter said, Supersport can't even try to compete. And that's a big statement. And remember that two-day workshop that we talked about earlier with 49 broadcasters? What we believe will happen is that New World TV will look to sub-license their rights to this network of free-to-air broadcasters. For CAF, the increased revenue is great, but there is a real risk because it's quite clear that New World doesn't have the same reach as MultiChoice and Canal Plus. For them, the risk is alienating their audience if New World has struggles with keeping up with payments, as has happened before with other guys who've tried this. But that doesn't look like it's happening this time. A source close to another matter tells us that New World is also looking to acquire rights in other sports and they're in it for the long haul. At the same time, Supersport has shown that they're willing to walk away from a deal if it doesn't suit their needs, as happened with the Indian Premier League. One thing is clear, 
this is a fascinating development in the world of African sports broadcasting. Who will blink first?